Welcome to the Really Awkward Podcast. Our guest today is here. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Hello. Uh, my name is Amr. I'm um, Egyptian. I used to work in aviation for six years. Mm. Uh, no, I used to work as a flight attendant mm. for six years, traveling, and uh, now I'm in real estate in Dubai. Nice to meet you all. And what's our topic today? Uh, what's our topic today? Life purpose. That's a good topic. Um, so where do we begin? So <laughs> I'm curious, like, did you find already your life purpose? Okay. Um, so this is a long story. I think um, I started thinking about it not so long ago. Um, it was a few years ago when I was still working as a flight attendant and I was actually on the way to Bali and when I was on the plane I came across this book which was called uh, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind hmm. From to Dispenza? Uh, no, it's uh, Joseph Morphy Oh, okay And it was actually the first time I read in my entire life Really? <laughs> yes so uh, I was like, okay, I always wanted, you know, a book about self-development and I saw this one. Someone gave it to me and I was like, okay, let me see what this is about. Um, I read the book and everything changed. What do you mean? So I read the book. It was talking about how, you know, your thoughts create your life and how it affects you and uh, how your outer reality is a reflection of, you know, what's going on inside your mind. And I read all of this while I was on the way to Bali, which was, which what I didn't know, it's like a big, you know, hub for spirituality and uh, uh, positive energy. And uh, that was, the, yeah, that was the first uh, thing that made me think about my purpose. But yet you haven't found it. I'm in the journey. I think we are all in a journey. Um, so do you think the life purpose is something set in stone? Like something that is already pre-programmed before you came to the world and you cannot change it? Or do you think it's something that can actually change from time to time? See, I used to think it is. it was something specific. But then I realized that it could be many things as um, I learned that what's written is not our destiny, but our destinies. The same way you play a, a video game and the programmer or the person who is creating the game like sets so many possibilities for so many actions that you can take and which you can get so many results for. Mm. And the same way, if you look at the game, it's a small example, but when you, you know, zoom out a little bit, that's where you can see the, the full picture, and it's kind of the same. So, yeah, I realized if there is so many possibilities, that means there are so many versions of me that exists out there. Mm. Each one of them might have different purpose. So which ones you have tried out yet where you thought or you ever been in a situation where you thought hey that's my purpose but then after some time it was fading away and you felt like mm, it's not my purpose and you were wondering why this happened I think so many times like um, for example the fitness industry um, I thought that you know as i think it's the same as all guys when they start going to the gym and they start to see changes in their bodies and they get six pack and then they realize <laughs> okay this is what i want to do and of course i had the same and then i started doing it for a while and after that when i uh, i started doing it i realized i'm not actually enjoying it you know mm. yes it's nice that i can change my my body and how I look and I can change my life and the way people perceive me but I really didn't think I really didn't know that I, I, w I would find it boring to you know help someone else achieve it even though I would love to help people but just this specific uh, you know field I didn't find myself in it 
which proved to me that yes, you could see, you could think that something is what you really want, and then when you try it, you realized it's actually not. I mm. don't know. How about you? Did you have the same? Um, yeah, I had a similar situation, and I think it's it's a good point to to try things out and then to realize because. I think like the, your life purpose or whatever purpose, it's just something that you really, that is aligned with your energies, with what you were born with, with your skills. You're not, everyone is born with some natural skills. And if you have find like your thing that you love to do that al is aligned with your skills, with your in like, how is it called, unique skills, then you will always gain energy and it's not fading away. And then I was doing personal trainings and I was feeling in the beginning, yeah, that's my purpose. I love to help people. I love to communicate with people. And then after some time, it was just fading away. And then I was wondering why it was fading away. And I discovered that my intention behind my profession as a personal personal trainer was not, as you said, help people. It was more, yeah, it makes me quick money, easy money, and it's bringing me to meet people, which I like to do, but in the end it was not, my intention behind this was, was not to help people to get a healthier lifestyle or to, to help them to be more fit or whatever. The intention was more superficial, to look good, to like make money and to also for me be more in shape again but can you actually get rich uh, doing personal training or in fitness um i think you can i mean it depends how you start the thing how you want to go about it because if you say you want to do it only you alone and one-to-one -one sessions of course y your daily time is limited everyone yeah. in this world have only like 24 hours a day so you cannot make more money than or make work more hours than what the day actually has but i think if you like expand your mind and you think about online businesses what everyone is doing right now online courses or you have people working for you doing personal trainings i think there is you can get rich but at the same time, I think it's a difficult question to ask because maybe for you, being rich has another meaning than for me or for any other person in this world. So it's very individual. Like, how would you see or what would you say is rich for you? I think the definition of, of rich for me is to, you know, have more money than I... It's basically freedom. I think freedom is the... is the definition of rich for me is to be able to work from anywhere or to travel anywhere around the world whenever I want to be able to buy anything I want um, to not be like limited mm. and uh, yeah I think it's about freedom it's all about freedom for me I don't know if there's anything really uh, anything else about it other than freedom yeah, I think mainly it's freedom, but you don't think there are many people out there who are like they're billionaires, they are actually able to travel everywhere where they want, they can afford everything they want, but at the same time they don't feel free. You know, I actually just realized, you know, what, what money or what wealth actually gives you, it makes you, it gives you a voice. Mm. So when you have money, basically people want to listen to you mm. and in a way you can you can actually get to uh, you get to help people just by having money just because they will listen to you um, and somehow I think it, this is one of the important things as well about having uh, you know our wealth or a lot of money mm. um, is it it gives you a voice that's a good point yeah I mean, yeah, it definitely gives you a voice. I mean, I'm not sure if that's always the case, but of course, if you want to have a voice, you have more opportunities to express it and to more opportunities to have people who are actually listening to you. But I don't think it goes hand in hand. Like, okay, I have a lot of money, so automatically I have a, a voice or I am heard. Um, 
in some point yes because everyone is aspiring to be rich and to be successful but in some point also no because i don't think it's easy to to become wealthy how many like really? i think the percentage of the the world's the world's population is who are actually rich is very limited i think it's what six percent of the world's population are rich people i think that's what they want us to know but i think there is way more rich people out there and actually also i'm pretty sure it's easy to be rich to be wealthy to to be in this abundance that everyone is craving the only problem is that we are all programmed through so society through today's world that we think and we believe actually it's difficult to get there and it's something rare but i think i truly believe everyone every human is programmed to live fully in abundance and to have more than what we need but as i said i think there is a main part from society that is programming us to believe that it's difficult to get to there because that's how we are being controlled more easily and if we would be aware of who we actually are in our true essence which has to do something with the purpose then we all get to to this point where just everything in life flows so easily because you i'm sure you also know people that they just have everything and everything seems so smooth and it flows in their life and and i was always wondering in high school already why there are these girls they are just they just have everything and and they just they are rich they're beautiful they they just have a lot of life energy and i was wondering like why there are some girls like this and then there are some girls they just have nothing of all of that and it, nothing in their life is flowing and is easy or seems to be and i think it's just that some they they just know or they were just born or they were treated or they were teached taught how to get to get to know themselves and get to to know their true essence their true energies because like i mean i told you about my friend my austrian friend and he's talking a lot about this and the more i hear about this and the more people i hear talking and talking about energies and about our true essence and about with what we were born and then i see people going from being depressed or being overwhelmed with their situation trying so hard to get money to giving all this up getting to know themselves and suddenly everything flows and they're rich without even them pursuing being rich or them pursuing um achieving something so i think it's really once you get to know your true essence what you are actually here for what i see as the purpose everything falls into place easily and everything comes without even pursuing you know when when you talk about this like that some people they have everything so easy and so smooth uh it just makes me you know remember that um what i've been told before is that everyone has their own test mm. so it's like for example i'm born rich um i have everything i need but my test could be that i don't have any friends or i i don't know i have low self esteem or um it, it could be anything and mm. i think i think uh, when we s it's only when we start to focus on ourselves and our own journey that we stop looking at what everybody else is having and we start to focus on ourselves and then we start to realize oh okay maybe then uh that's my test you know maybe that's uh, that's what i need to work on and i'm sure that everybody has something to work on even if they have like a lot of wealth yeah for sure there is something in their life that they need to improve and they need to yeah. work on and that is their test um i obviously didn't know that before because you know uh, the way we were brought up is everyone focuses on everyone and uh, you see what like me growing up in a middle eastern or third world country um i you look at what everybody else is doing mm. and you know you just want to do it because you don't want to be left out and um it's actually so interesting so you were growing up where in egypt 
in Egypt and I was growing up in Austria. So I think like our experiences experiences from growing up has to be so different, right? Yeah, I course. mean, what you were taught when you were growing up uh, that you can remember now, what you were taught that had that is important in life and how you were taught to, to be or to have your life. Well, um, thinking about, you know, when it comes to money, we were always taught to, uh, that you have to have a stable job, stable income, uh, no taking risk because risk is not good. Um, you always look up to or your parents look uh, at you know their relatives or your relatives mm. and th they see what they are doing and then they want the same for you it could be that maybe your dad wants you to to be a doctor but he doesn't consider maybe it's not for you mm. it's all about you know what the society is talking about and what the society wants you to be um, which eventually I learned that it only serves very small percentage of people um, to make people think that way, you know? So, for example, if, if they make these schools and in, that, in those schools you are only taught to think in a certain way that this is how it should be, this is how you should work, uh, you should go to work, I don't know, in the government or you should yeah. go to work in... Uh, uh, under you know in some company and it should be a big company or whatever and that's what you are taught but then you you learn that this is only to control you because if you think like this you will never think oh, i have to become rich or i want to get rich and you know actually cause a real impact in people's lives yeah. you will only think that i have to be the same as my friends or my relatives and this is what they program us yeah, I mean that's pretty similar to how we, how I was growing up. So actually, it's not much difference. It's not much it different. It's only I think about the uh, relationships, about between men and women. Uh. Yeah, of course. But now when I'm thinking about, um, just life purpose and how we were growing up, it's I thought it, it's different maybe, but actually it's it's pretty much the same. It's just yeah. that we were all programmed to play these roles and with these roles we're taking these roles up to our life and the more old we, we are the more we the more we identify ourselves with those roles and the less we think out of the box but as a child i think it's so for example i mean i cannot really remember what i was thinking as a child but i'm when i'm seeing now children i'm seeing them having fun and not thinking about anything and just like building an building a sand castle or a snow castle or whatever and then destroying it just to build a new one and is such a different thinking and then when we are now old we let's say we are now um building our podcast we have our audience we build it and then we are identifying ourselves with being with, with being YouTuber or with having a good podcast, we would never want to destroy that. Although I think when we destroy things, always there are coming, like we're opening ways for new things, right? Um, you see, I, I really believe in this identity shifting mm. where, um, where you don't limit yourself to one identity. Uh, you just leave it open and this way you could you could be anyone and this was a big challenge for me because like i've had multiple transformations in my life from just being a, you know a little kid to growing up to being maybe a, as a man and uh, changing my body and then changing what i do um, and i realized that the only way i was able to transfer from one identity to another fully it was when i stopped acting and I stopped uh, even having the same things that I was as the previous identity mm. to basically stop everything I had to do with the previous identity and to start acting like the new person and um, and pretend in a way until it becomes a reality of course with visualization as well and with even scripting yeah um, so literally you destroyed, you had to destroy and give up your old identity to get your new, Yeah, right? it's not easy to give up your old identity. I mean, I know uh, it's not easy, like, 
I know. <laughs> you always, you know, like I realized, they always attach to to things, even to yeah. your clothes. Uh, you, like I've had pieces of clothes from when I was, I don't know, uh, twenty years old. Now I'm thirty two. Uh, from when I was twenty, to I'm like, what is this even still doing here? You know? Yeah. Because I realized that everything holds energy in it, and it can hold you back in a way if you still attach to it. Yeah. energetically you cannot move on to the next phase yeah so um, that i didn't know before um, but of course e each one of us is on his own or her own journey yeah and we keep discovering things along the way and i think i think this is the way life should be yeah i think so too never be certain and always to discover new things but still i think we should find the life purpose because I see so many people being rich or not being rich doesn't matter, but doing things and being exhausted after the day. Like you wake up, you do your stuff and you come home and you're exhausted. And also I see people who are waking up early, doing their things, coming home and not being exhausted because they are aligned with their energies, with their purpose. And to be honest, like I'm aspiring, t aspiring to find this purpose and to also wake up, do my stuff that I'm just loving to do and coming home and being still energetic and not feeling drained and exhausted from life. I think I want to live life and not just in my free time. I want to live life all the time. So you're actually, uh, you're actually saying that there is something that if you find it, that it gives you, it kind of charges you like yeah. by just by doing it, you get more energy and you keep doing it and then you get more energy. And that's different from doing something that is away from your essence, like you call it. Yeah. Which I definitely drains you yeah. more. Yeah. yeah that's and also I think that all, I mean, that's very now controversial, but I believe that all kind of sickness, even if you're overweight, it has to do something with not expressing your tr true energies, your true essence. And therefore, these energies need to express either in any sickness, they manifest in a sickness, or in like, for example, I feel it for myself, if I'm now busy all day doing things I love to do, like being on Instagram, being in front of the camera, just things that really they just give me energy. I'm not tending to eat so much, but if I'm having nothing to do all day long, I'm eating and I'm realizing that I'm eating because I'm not expressing my energies. My energies are getting out there and not being at home and doing nothing. And I think it's so important to know that because of course everyone else, so not everyone else, but everyone in this world have a different purpose and there is not one person that has the exact same energies than the other. Like not there are no two are the same. And it's important, as you said, you, you pretend to be for a new identity, but also it's important to disidentify. Like you, you, pre you can only pretend to be something or somewhere if you have seen it already with your mind. But I think it's dangerous to do that in the same way because you are identifying with something or you want to be somewhere or something that you might not. You know what I mean? Because somewhere else is there already doesn't mean that you are meant to be there as well. Like you are your own person. So I think that's another thing that is just important to keep in mind. Of course, get inspired, but always if everything that is not coming from the mind is way bigger and is more connected with your essence. You know, that's why I think when you are always on the look for something, you miss out on the on the actual, uh, you know, purpose, which is enjoying the process. And I think I've learned that the most in the gym, where you, when you go and you're like thinking, oh, what is, you know, my, why my body is not changing? Yeah. And you keep looking at it every single time you go, you miss out on the actual thing, which is enjoying the journey, yeah. not the final result. Yeah. And I learned that the most by going to the gym regularly and by lifting weights. Um, I literally, 
taught myself how to you know enjoy being in the gym like by maybe buying gym clothes or having a nice headphones or <laughs> whatever just to make me enjoy more you know the time there and that i think this is enjoying the journey this is the definition of enjoying the journey is to just make it more attractive to want to do it more and the same goes for um, the purpose which instead of you know always being on the look of so, uh, like instead of always being on the look for something to kind of enjoy whatever you are doing in the moment and be open for change and be open to receive you know callings and to receive information because I, I see a lot of people they are not open they are like I don't want but yeah. it could be better for you yeah. no no I don't yeah. So, which means they are telling themselves, no, I do not want anything new. I don't want to change. I don't want anyone to change me, even if this change is better for them. There's a lot of uh, misconception about change, especially with women. Th she says, like, uh, I don't want him to change me. Mm. You know, but it could be, this change could be for the better. Mm. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, he doesn't like you the way you are yes he likes you the way you are but he might want you to to be better you know and applies of course for for also for men um yeah. but change can be to the better yeah i think so too then on a great journey <laughs> to <laughs> our purpose thank you so much for coming and i hope you guys enjoyed our podcast we are still on our journey to find our purpose and it's might doing youtube it might not <laughs> and we are happy you want to listen to our random and awkward conversations <laughs> it's not really awkward but ne maybe next <laughs> one would be <laughs> you know but it's it's funny because i was thinking why i want to call it awkward and then i was thinking it's actually because if i'm calling it now any other way like the really good or the really spiritual then i'm feeling like pressured to say the right things you know <laughs> and if i'm calling it the really awkward oh, okay. podcast yeah, okay. yeah you know then i don't feel the, the right. pressure to to say the right thing or to do the <laughs> right way or to dress a certain way so i'm just open to whatever like if i feel funny i want to be funny and if i feel serious <laughs> i want to be serious Interesting. <laughs>